guys, it's Nassim here. Now, after going back and using the iPhone 12 mini for a good amount of time now, the one thing that kept coming to my mind whenever I was using it on a day-to-day -day basis was this simple statement that I think explains the iPhone 12 mini pretty perfectly. And that statement is, I think that the iPhone 12 mini is one of the most disappointing phones in Apple's history. And now I say that the 12 mini is disappointing because when you think about it, the iPhone 12 mini has a really good display, it has a really good build, it has a top tier camera system, and it has a top tier software, all while being in a very compact size. And you might be confused as to why I said that the 12 mini was disappointing, but started saying everything that's great about it. But the fact of the matter is that in a lot of categories, it's actually a really good phone but it does suck in the most important category that anyone needs in their phone. And that's a good battery life. And it doesn't matter how good your display is and it doesn't matter how good your phone is overall because you can't truly experience any of the upsides of a phone when your phone is dying on you not even midway throughout the day. And that's why battery is the most important factor in a phone. There may be even situations where you need your phone to make an important call towards the end of the day or there may be a time where you won't be able to charge your phone for an extended amount of time and that's where a good battery comes in. But if you are someone who still wants the 12 mini as your main phone or even your secondary phone, I will still say that you can get this phone because it is good in every aspect except the battery life. And I wanted to give you guys my experience with it after daily use. Now the first thing that I wanted to look at when it comes to how the iPhone 12 mini holds up in 2022 was the display. Now the iPhone 12 mini has a 5.4 inch liquid retina display that overall feels really smooth. Whenever I was scrolling through the OS or any other app, I never got any lags and I was really impressed with how well the 12 mini held up even after one year of use. And something that I surprisingly really liked about the 12 mini was that it was really small in comparison to the regular 12 and 13, but it still had a full display unlike the SE3. So whenever I was using my phone, it wasn't hard to see anything and I could still enjoy everything that it had to offer. The brightness was honestly okay at best whenever I was outside with my phone and the sun started shining. I would usually have to put my hand over my phone so that I could see better, which was underwhelming when compared to any other phone in the market. The haptics were also the exact same as the 12 and 13. Like as you can see here, everything feels really sharp. I didn't notice any hiccups. And whenever I would press on something, the app animations were flawless and still impressive a year later. And the last thing that I really liked about the display was how good the overall viewing experience was. The resolution was very sharp. The colors were very vibrant, just like on the regular 12. And while the watching experience wasn't as good as the regular 12 and 13, it still got the job done and left me pretty satisfied. And to show you guys what I mean, here's an example of me playing a game and watching a video. Now the next thing that I wanted to look at when it comes to how the iPhone 12 mini holds up in 2022 was the software. Now the software on the 12 mini was really impressive when it came to how smooth it ran. The animations were very fast. Even when I was in the car and my phone would get hot, the software still held up really well and was able to withstand tougher situations. And the only problem that I had when I would play a power heavy game like Asphalt 9, the battery would heat up and the game would become a little laggy. Also the fact that it was putting more strain on the battery really took a toll on how the game would perform. But besides that, I still had those premium iOS software features like the ability to connect the different devices at ease, iMessage, FaceTime, and all of those premium iOS apps that many people use. And overall, it still had that iOS smoothness that even with the bugs was a joy using. And if you are considering getting this phone, then using less power heavy apps will improve the performance and minimize the bugs. Now, the next thing that I wanted to look at when it comes to how the iPhone 12 mini holds up in 2022 was the battery. Now, when it came to a battery on the iPhone 12 mini, I would get three to four hours of on-screen time, which was much less than any of my other phones. Also, when I would go out, I didn't use any power heavy apps 
and I still really struggle to make the phone last throughout the day. And towards the middle of the day, my phone will be on 4% and there were some times where I didn't have my portable charger on me, so I would have to put it on airplane mode so that it could last me until I found one, which was really underwhelming. The charge times were also pretty much the same as the iPhone 12 and 13. The only difference is that the battery life was worse on the 12 mini, so the charge times weren't as rewarding. So overall, I would say that the battery on the iPhone 12 mini was really bad, and if you're someone who was looking to get the 12 mini in 2022, then this phone will struggle with keeping up on a daily basis. Now, the next thing that I wanted to look at when it comes to how the iPhone 12 mini holds up in 2022 was the speakers. Now, the speakers on the 12 mini weren't as good as the 12 or the 13 because they are indeed smaller, but I would still say that these were able to hold their own weight. The bass was weak as usual, but that's pretty much the case with most smartphones. The overall sound quality was really good. The vocals were crystal clear. The instrumental sounded good. And the only other problem that I had was that since they were smaller speakers, they weren't as loud. So that can be a turnoff for a lot of people. And to give you guys an idea of how the speakers sound, I'm going to play a video so that you can see just how loud they are. And now the final thing that I wanted to look at when it comes to how the iPhone 12 mini holds up in 2022 was the cameras. Now the iPhone 12 mini has a 12 megapixel wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto camera that I would say were pretty much the same as the iPhone 12 and 13. It still was able to capture great looking photos and handle nice environments really well. And when we look at the daytime outside photos, we can see that this is where the camera was able to shine. My selfies were surprisingly good. The accuracy was on point and the resolution was mildly sharp. Even when we look at the inside daytime photos, we can see that the camera game was able to shine with good lighting. The sharpness was pretty much always there, so it was acceptable, and my skin tone looked great, and objects looked really good too. And when it came to the overall video quality, every video that I took was good, especially when the lighting was right. And to show you guys what I mean, here's a sample video. And now coming to my final conclusion, I think that the iPhone 12 mini was a really disappointing phone because it had one of the biggest flaws that any phone could have. And I honestly would rather choose the iPhone 13 mini since it does have a better battery life and a faster chip, all while not costing that much. And there it is, my review on the iPhone 12 mini. Now let me know down below, would you get the iPhone 12 mini over the iPhone 13 mini? If so, then why? And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. It'll be very appreciated. And as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Hey.